Uh, Attorney Chung Peng, uh, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. We are happy to have you here with us. Um, could you tell us a little bit about asylum uh, in United States? So getting asylum in United States. Okay. Um, one um, gets asylum in the U.S. by applying to the American government um, under the law section 208, INA section 208, which is called request for asylum in the United States. And um, to the, the main thing to know is that there are various types of asylum. Asylum law is extremely well developed in the United States. And traditionally, there is a, what they call classic asylum, which is based on individual showing of persecution. That means because of one's nationality, religion, social origin, or political opinion or nationality, one of these five grounds, uh, one fears persecution in their home country. There's individual uh, uh, persecution model, which is uh, actually defined by the U.S. Supreme Court decision in 1987 called Cardozo Fonseca. That's the classic decision that defines that. And under that uh, definition, an individual may get asylum if he shows either past persecution or well-founded fear of future persecution on grounds of race, religion, nationality, social group, or political opinion. Okay. An additional ground of asylum which uh, impacts Indonesians uh, in particular is what they call group-based asylum. We, uh, where a group is shown to suffer persecution for example, Indonesian Chinese or Indonesian Christians. And uh, I would go into uh, the, the history of that uh, concept as it applies to Indonesians. The two key decisions in this case is one is Sal versus Ashcroft, S-A-E-L, mm -hmm. and Lolong uh, versus Gonzalez. Okay. Um, in the Sal decision, um, the Indonesian Chinese were found to be what they call a disfavored group. A disfavored group, if one shows that one belongs to a disfavored group, one then needs to only show a comparatively low level of individual risk. That's the impact of cell. So like in the cell case, uh, cell is a woman who is married to an Indonesian native. She was threatened, harassed, chased after during the mayor right? but she was never physically harmed. So the court, the Ninth Circuit, granted asylum based on uh, the fact that Sal belongs to that disfavored group that historically has suffered harm in Indonesia. Okay. So because she belongs to that disfavored group, um, Sal doesn't need to show a very high risk of harm or very serious harm to get, to get asylum. So that's the significance of cell, in the ninth, which is good law in the Ninth Circuit. Uh, for the, after cell was decided, the Ninth Circuit went on to decide the case of Lolong versus Gonzalez. In Lolong, the Ninth Circuit further developed the concept of group persecution by saying that there are two subgroups of Indonesian Chinese who are at a particularly high risk of persecution. One is uh, Chinese women, and the other group is Christians. And under Law Long, um, then a person can show that he qualifies for asylum by showing that he belongs to these subgroups, which are particularly at risk. And mem membership in this subgroup then would be sufficient to qualify for asylum without uh, further evidence. So the case of Lo Long was the case of an Indonesian Chinese woman, I believe, who was in Calif Northern California. And she sought asylum because a friend of hers was raped and then an uncle seriously injured in the mayor right. Okay. That decision was appealed by the Attorney General of the United States. And in May 2007, the Ninth Circuit en banc, which means all the judges sitting together, reversed itself, rather vacated 
the law long decision and say law long is no longer good law. Okay. So it is no long and when law long got vacated in two thousand seven, an Indonesian applicant no longer can seek asylum, can qualify for asylum simply by saying that I belong to these two subgroups of people, namely Indonesian Chinese women and Indonesian Chinese Christian to qualify for asylum. So the impact of Law Long, vacating of Law Long in 2007, basically the way we see it is that um, the court reverts back to cell. So if one one's case is similar to cell, uh, then one still can qualify for asylum. One can no longer simply claim asylum based on membership in subgroups. One has to show that um, either he, has suffered, he or she has suffered past harm, specific incidents of harm, discrimination, harassment and violence and threats of violence, or that there are some other characteristics that make this person more likely to suffer harm. So uh, that particular asylum applicant then has to show how different he is, that his fear of persecution is not simply based on membership in the group called Indonesian Chinese. So, uh, are you saying that uh, other group, let's say, uh, that uh, is persecuted in a certain country, like maybe, uh, uh, you know, like a Muslim group like Ahmadiyah in Indonesia, mm -hmm. they can probably get asylum in United States? Yes, if one shows that um, there is a pattern and practice, that's a term of art, a persecution against members of that group, then uh, one can potentially qualify by showing a lowered, a lowered level of individual harm, as opposed to the classic traditional asylum theory, you've got to show that you're going to be singled out. Okay. But if your group is one that's vulnerable to, uh, to a pattern and practice of persecution, then, um, then you could show that one, you belong to that group and you have to show some connection between that group membership and the likelihood of harm. You cannot show zero connection, you've got to show some connection, but it would be a lower burden of proof. Okay. So essentially, uh, group asylum theory is really a sliding scale. So um, the higher the persecution, likelihood of persecution of your group, the lower you need to show individual risk. So for example, during World War II, uh, just by being a Jew, you can get persecuted and killed. So there will be an extreme form of group persecution. So with that, you really don't need to show that I am individually at risk because the mere fact that you are a Jew could, in the World War II situation, suffice to get you killed. Right? But in the case of Sal and Law Long, the court has said that the Indonesian Chinese situation does not quite reach that point of pattern and practice of persecution. But it still has sufficient evidence to show that the group is disfavored historically, subject to cycles of violence. So for Indonesian Chinese, they got to show a lowered risk of persecution, but there's still got to be some some circumstances, some factual background that show that you are at risk and that it's not simple membership in that group that puts you at risk. For example, if you are a leader in your community, if you are a church leader, if you are an outspoken critic of the government, some characteristic about you that cost, was more likely to cause you to be single out. Okay. Sometimes intermarriage, interracial marriage, or outspoken uh, uh, philosophy uh, against certain religion, all those things may put you at risk. So those facts basically have to be a, a must to satisfy the claim. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pang. Thank you.